Hi there. Today, I'm going to try to do a video about water monitors. Water monitors can be found in Australia, in Africa, in Indonesia, and in Asia. When people say water monitors, usually, most of the time, they're talking about Asian water monitors. But depending where you're coming from or where you are, a water monitor is basically a medium or large monitor that lives in the water. So, for example, in Australia, uh, when people talk about water monitors, uh, they're talking about the uh, Mertens water monitor or the Australian water monitor. Another example, in Africa, when people talk about water monitors, uh, usually, they, usually they're talking about the Nile water monitor. So, a large water monitor that lives in the water and has this common name or common appellation, uh, Nile monitor or Nile water monitor. Uh, there's also the ornate water monitor uh, found in Africa also, mostly in Central Africa, as well as a few places uh, in West Africa. Uh, but basically, yes, if you're in Africa and you're talking about water monitors, uh, you're talking about either the Nile water monitor or Nile monitor uh, or the ornate water monitor, also ornate monitor. Now, I want to talk about Asian and Indonesian water monitors. Uh, before I do, I just want to remind you that I'm not a professional. Uh, I'm not a zoologist or anything. I have a uh, small background in uh, botany, um, but that's it. So, I created a list, especially for you, dedicated to Asian and Indonesian water monitors. I gathered a few pictures for you uh, from the internet, mostly from Wikipedia, from other websites. Uh, I've tried to find recent information about Asian and Indonesian water monitors. Uh, I'm going to give you the references, list of books, list of websites, uh, lists of lists, and other lists and references. So, right now, I don't own the rights to these uh, pictures. Uh, I only own the rights of this list. So, I'm just going to read this list. Um, there we go. List of Asian and Indonesian water monitors. Number one. The Cumming Water Monitors, or Varanus Cumming Eye Cumming Eye, which is a medium to large water monitor uh, found in the Philippines. It is yellow, has sometimes bright yellow or almost white markings. Uh, very, very nice uh, water monitors. So there you go, that's number one, the Cumming Eye, or Cummings uh, Water Monitor. Number two, the Varanus coming eye samarensis, or the Samar water monitor. This is also a medium size to large monitor that is uh, found in the Philippines also. A strong resemblance uh, to its uh, cousin, the Cummings water monitor, the Samar water monitor looks like a coming eye but is much darker has less uh, has less yellow on its face 
and overall at darker markings compared to the coming eye or Cummings water monitor. So that's number two, the Samarensis or Samar water monitor. Uh, number three, there is this uh, dark and slender monitor that is called the Marmo water monitor, also called the uh, Mindoro Island water monitor. So like I said, it's a pretty dark and slender water monitor. Um, and there you go. That's uh, number three, uh, the Marmo uh, water monitor or Mindoro Island uh, water monitor. So now we have uh, number four. Number four is the Varanis Nuchalis or the Nuchalis water monitor also called the white-headed monitor or black-headed water monitor or white-head monitor or black-head monitor. Many names uh, for the same animal. Varanus salvator nuchalis or Varanus nuchalis. This is a medium-sized water monitor, usually four to five feet long maximum. Uh, really pretty and very uh, delicate water monitor, if I may say so. So that's number four, uh, New Chalice, the white head or black head uh, water monitor. Now we have number five. Number five is the Palawan, not Palawan, Palawan water monitor, also called the Palu water monitor. Uh, it's a fairly nice looking uh, water monitor, uh, mostly dark with uh, tiny shiny spots. I don't know how to de describe it, but I'm just gonna... I'm, let, let me just say that the Palawan or Palu water monitor is a relatively dark water monitor with tiny shiny spots so there that that's the uh, explanation for the uh, palu water monitor i'm sorry i can't do any better but there you go that way now you know <laughs> number six is the rasmus water monitor varanus Rasmus and I, or Varanus Salvatore Rasmus and I, is also a relatively dark water monitor with shiny spots uh, compared to the previous water monitor, the Polywater water monitor. Um, the Rasmus and I is also a dark water monitor with shiny spots, but those spots are more uh, defined than the Palu water monitor. Uh, yeah, I know, it's a horrible description, but I'm not a descriptionist. Uh, I'm just reading names off a list. So if you have a better explanation or a better description of the Rasmus water monitor, please share it with me because I'm looking for uh, more information about the uh, Varanus Salvatore complex or the Asian Indonesian water monitor complex. Um, taxonomy is changing all the time. Okay. When I learned taxonomy um, many years ago, uh, I got a little warning from the instructor saying that taxonomy always changes and every animal or plant or fungi or every entity has usually usually one or two scientific names because one of those two scientific names is under revision then there is a common name right, then a vernacular name, then a local name, so 
just keep in mind that most, if not all, animals, plants, fungi, and whatever entity uh, has a name for its time, but this name is eventually going to disappear or going to evolve. So, for example, right now I'm reading a list of water monitors. Uh, this list is m focusing on Asian and Indonesian water monitors. And some of these animals uh, already changed names. Uh, some of these animals uh, were discovered just a few years ago. Uh, some of these animals were discovered about 300 years ago. And those names always change. So if you're watching this video right now, that's great. If you're watching this video in two months, two years, or three years, uh, I, I, I am quite confident that most of these names uh, are going to change and there's going to be more animals uh, described. So that was the Rasmus water monitor, dark water monitor with uh, shiny spots but not as shiny as the Palu water monitor. So that was the Rasmus water monitor, number six. Now number seven. Number seven is called the uh, Daluba water monitor. I guess you can call it the Daluba water monitor. Yes. Uh, it's a medium-sized water monitor that looks like a yellow new chalice, but it's not a new chalice. There you go. That was a horrible description for the Daluba water monitor. Um, I found a few pictures. If you're watching a uh, the picture right now you'll know what I'm talking about but yeah the uh, Deluba water monitor basically is a yellowish water monitor that looks like a new chalice but is not quite a new chalice so number eight there is a wonderful newly described uh, water monitor that is, that can be called the uh, Bango uh, water monitor it's a, uh, med also a medium-sized uh, water monitor. Uh, it also looks like a new chalice, but it is not a new chalice. Uh, it is a, uh, I want to say, a very delicate and gracious uh, looking water monitor. Uh, medium-sized, it's uh, kind of uh, gray. Uh, black and white all over, uh, looks like a new chalice, but it's not a new chalice. So there you go, that was the horrible description of the Bango water monitor, just for you. Now, let's talk about Varanus Salvatore. Uh, number nine is uh, Varanus Salvatore Salvatore, the Sri Lanka water monitor. A fairly large animal with uh, bright spots on his back. Uh, these spots are arranged in a rosette, which is a big spot with a tiny little spot in it. There you go. That's the terrible description of a rosette pattern. Well, uh, Verana Salvatore Salvatore, the Sri Lanka water monitor, gigantic animal. Uh, it is considered a divinity in some places, uh, and I can absolutely understand why, because these animals are just uh, gigantic and uh, extraordinary. There we go. Number nine, the Sri Lanka Salvatore Salvatore Sri Lanka water monitor. Terrible description, I know, I know, but there we go. Number ten, the Andaman Island water monitor, or the uh, Andamanensis water monitor, which is a 
fairly large and dark uh, water monitor, mostly found on Andaman Island. Andaman, Andaman, Andaman Island. So there you go. That's the number 10, the Andaman uh, water monitor. Uh, if you're still watching this video, I really want to thank you. Uh, if this uh, list of different uh, water monitor uh, is helping you, uh, that's great, because it took me a little while to figure out uh, the arrangement and uh, technicality of uh, writing uh, such a list of uh, water monitors. So there you go, that's uh, number 10, the Andaman, uh, Andaman water monitor. And we have uh, number uh, <clears throat> number eleven is the two stripe water monitor, also called the Biv, also called the Java water monitor, also called Sumbawa, some variations of uh, Celebensis or shoulder stripe water monitor. Many names for the same animal. Uh, medium, actually no, no, not a medium size, a large water monitor uh, that is uh, fairly common in terrariums and uh, vivariums, uh, bred in captivity for the past, I don't know, 20 or 25 years. Uh, these days, um, the Biv water monitor, Java or Sumbawa, Biv, I'm, I call it the Biv. Uh, the Biv water monitor is uh, well. Most people will tell you that these animals are fairly easy to work with, um, and so a lot of breeders have developed uh, specific patterns, uh, specific colors. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, line breeding, so now there are a lot. Uh, there are a lot of albino water monitors. Uh, some of them are uh, melanistic. Uh, some of them are also well, amelanistic. Uh, lots of, um, like I said, different variations, different patterns, different colors. Uh, usually, the most common water monitor found in terrariums and vivariums is the BIV water monitor, also called uh, Java Sumbawa, two stripe uh, variation, also called the Celebensis. Uh, Celebensis used to be a subspecies of Salvatore, then finally people said, no, oh, no. No, it looks more like a uh, biv, so let's call it a biv. Uh, other uh, people discovered that Celebensis is actually uh, closely uh, related to undescribed uh, water monitors. So there we go. I'm totally lost. I have no idea what's going on right now. The biv, two stripe, uh, Java Sumbawa Celebensis uh, water monitor. It's a very large panel of names and appellations for uh, basically the same creature. So there you go. That was an amazing uh, description of Varanus Salvatore Bivitatis, the two-stripe water monitor, Java Sumbawa, etc., etc. Next, uh, number 12. Ah, uh, number 12, number 12. Number 12 is a cluster of Varanus Salvatore that are undescribed. So there is one Salvatore SP found somewhere here in the, this island. Then there is another Verena Salvatore SP found in another area on another island. Then there is another yet undescribed uh, Verena Salvatore present on another island called Verena SP as undescribed or 
cross or whatever, undescribed, and this big group of Varanus Salvatore SP is called the Varanus Salvatore SSP uh, group. I know, I know, I know. It's a, it's, a, it's a horrible description, but that's the best I can do right now. So that's number 12, the Varanus Salvatore SP, or the group Varanus Salvatore SSP, mostly found in Indonesia, but now, you know, professionals, herpetologists, zoologists, and other qualified people are realizing that those undescribed Varanus Salvatore SP can also be found in Asia. So let's call them the uh, Asian Indonesian undescribed water monitors. So the Varanus SP, Varanus SSP. Now number 13. Number 13 is extraordinary. Uh, the macro water monitor can be found uh, almost everywhere in Asia. Uh, they can be found uh, here, there, and also there, and everywhere. There you go. So the macro water monitor is a fairly large uh, water monitor that has some usually some dark and grayish uh, patterns and coloration. Uh, and there is also Varanus Salvatore uh, Kumaini or Varanus Kumani, the black dragon, or yeah, the black dragon, uh, used to be a species Varanus Kumani, Kumainai, Kumani, then under a strict revision of Varanus Salvatore complex, uh, people realized that the black dragon is apparently a specific locality of the macro water monitor. So, how, how can I describe it? Uh, until recently, there was the macro water monitor that can be dark or gray, and sometimes uh, after a lot of work and line breeding, some of, the, some of those macro water monitors can be all black. Um, and in another area, in another locality, within the range of the macro water monitor, there is a specific population um, called the black dragons. So these animals resemble the macro in almost every way, except that they are usually a little bit smaller and they are all dark all black. Um, until recently, like I said, there was the macro water monitor on one side and then the Komani on the other side and then eventually it became kind of a merger and I'm totally lost. So I'm just gonna tell you that there is this animal called the uh, macro water monitor somewhere and within its range, there is a different population called the black dragon, uh, Komainei, or uh, Komani, uh, Macromani. Okay, so there you go. That was the horrible explanation of the uh, macro water monitor on one side and the uh, black dragon, Komani water monitor on the other side. Now, a lot of people work with black dragons in terrariums and some breeders have black dragons that are a little bit smaller with very you know with very distinctive I don't know how to explain it with a certain build if you will and then other breeders uh, have also black dragons 
which are a little bit larger. Okay, so is it just a result of line breeding? Is it just a result of crossing um, darker animal from one population and breeding it with a totally dark animal from another population to create a totally dark offspring in order to sell some baby black dragons? <laughs> I don't know. But there you go. That's the worst explanation uh, I could find uh, to describe the black dragons, um, Macro and Komani. Okay, so next there is this dark and slender water monitor uh, called the Togian water monitor, which is a black water monitor with white markings on the belly, on the throat, uh, and under the guller and chin area. So there we go. That is the uh, Togian water monitor. Uh, very good looking water monitor also. Uh, number 15. Uh, there's no number 15. And number 16, Varanus Salvator Zigleri, or Varanus Zigleri. Once again, depending on who you talk to and when, taxonomy changes all the time. Uh, and this one, until very recently, was uh, considered the uh, Varanus Salvator Zigleri. Varanus Salvator Zigleri, also called the Obi Island Water Monitor, can be found in Indonesia on the island of Obi. That is why it is called the Obi Water Monitor. And now, let's watch a short mockumentary about OB-1 water monitors. Described in 2010 and named after Thomas Ziegler, the Ziegler monitor, also called the OB Island water monitor, can be found on OB Island in the Maluku province, Indonesia. This medium-sized monitor can attain a moderate size of about 3 to 4 feet long. This is probably one of the only species of water monitors that share its habitat with mangrove monitors, Rainer Gunther monitors, blue tail monitors, and other monitoring creatures. The Ziegler water monitor can be easily identified thanks to its bright yellow head and circular markings on top of its head. The neck area is usually dark or sometimes olive green. This wonderful animal possesses tiny yellow spots on the lower back. These will fade away in time. This agile animal can be found in or near the water, but it also likes to climb and swim and climb some more. Varanus Salvatore Zigleri, or Varanus Zigleri, or also called the OB Island Water Monitor, is an awesome medium-sized water monitor. It looks cool, it's nice, and it's great. It's totally super. Okay, so if you're still watching this video, I really want to thank you. And I just want to remind you that this is not a care video. If you want to watch a, a care video, there are plenty of Asian water monitor care video out there on the internet on YouTube. Uh, if I wanted to do a little care video, I'd say something like, uh, well, if you keep a uh, baby uh, water monitor, make sure to keep the temperature around uh, 78 to 80 degrees. Uh, provide a basking area around 110 to 120 degrees. Make sure to provide UVB as well as heat. Uh, these uh, wonderful uh, little animals uh, require about 70 to 80 percent uh, humidity. Whether it's a ornate water monitor or a Nile water monitor or a Mertens water monitor or a Togian water monitor or a Salvatore water monitor or a Biv water monitor or an Obi Island water monitor. 
you may want to keep the humidity around 70 to 80 percent. Now, that was uh, about the humidity. Now, for the feeding, I like to offer baby monitors a wide variety of food items, including but not limited to dubia roaches, little fish, crustaceans, whole shell, without the shell, a little bit of everything. I like to offer sometimes tiny rodents on occasions. I like to offer eggs. I like to offer the Missouri crocodilian diet on occasions. I also like to provide, uh, like I said, eggs, including bird eggs and also reptile eggs. I also like to give them chicken gizzards, chicken hearts. There is a big variety of food items that I like to offer, you know, crickets, Praying mantis, pr pr praying mantises, praying mantises, praying mantids. You can do snails, you can do a lot of everything. As long as the food is clean and healthy, I like to provide a good variety. Uh, once again, I like to provide a high UVB output. I also like to give calcium and vitamins to the animals once a week or every other week depending on the age of the animal. Uh, when it comes to mostly Asian water monitors, mostly Salvatore family water monitor, whether it's a BIV or a macro or an OB or whatever Asian or Indonesian water monitor it is, uh, I like to keep for, for the babies at least, a very simple terrarium. Uh, not too many hides. I want to make sure that the animal is watching me um, when I'm doing the maintenance, when I'm cleaning the water. Yeah. Water monitors need clean water every day. I'm, I'm just going to uh, sound uh, like a uh, party pooper here, but water monitors, and actually most, if not all, monitors like to poop in their water. As soon as it's clean, an animal will usually poop in the water. So whether it's a savanna monitor, a mangrove monitor, or a water monitor, or an Argus monitor, I like to keep the water clean and I like to change the water every day. So you don't have to do it, it's just what I do. Uh, some people like to do things a little bit differently. Some people have uh, filters in their water uh, containers. I don't use filters in my water containers. I like to um, manually and mechanically uh, clean the water every day. So there you go, food, water, heat, humidity, Climbing areas because I found that most, if not all, baby monitors like to climb. Uh, whether it's an Argus, a Savanna, a water monitor, or a Dumeril, or a Majigger monitor, uh, most, if not all, baby monitors like to climb. Then, eventually, when they're becoming a juvenile or an adult, some uh, species and some different subspecies uh, will not climb as often as uh, baby monitors. Uh, so it's something to keep in mind uh, when it comes, for example, for Dumeril's monitors and Asian water monitors, the Salvatore family. Salvatore family. <laughs> when it comes to water monitors or Asian or Indonesian water monitors, uh, even mangrove monitors, dumerals, uh, tree monitors, and probably peach throat monitors and a lot of monitors like to climb even when they are adults. For example, Argus monitors have this uh, reputation of being uh, very underground kind of animals or underground, on, 
under ground animals or on the ground animals but uh, my love to climb they climb all day every day uh, even the adults and the babies so there you go that was the little uh, parenthesis about the climbing areas so husbandry wise uh, that is what I would say uh, if this was a um, care video about water monitors in general uh, when it comes to socializing uh, I don't really like to use the word taming. Uh, a tamed animal is an animal that is social and trained. So it responds to its name, it can bring you something, it can jump, it can play with you. Uh, that is what a tame animal is. My dogs are tamed, okay? My cats are not tamed. Your cats are not tamed, okay? They're social. Some, some cats are social. Some of them are not social. Uh, some cats can be trained, okay, to jump from an area to another, but they're not fully... That's just my personal opinion about socializing, taming, and training, but... Uh, for example, for a cat, I think they're social and can be trained, but I don't think they're really tamed, right? I don't fully trust a cat, okay? <laughs> so, there you go. So, I'm going to talk briefly about the uh, socializing and training uh, aspect of uh, monitor keeping. Uh, I don't believe that any water monitor or any reptile can be fully tamed. Uh, that's just my version. They can be social, they can be trained. Some animals can be very nice, but some animals will just never be nice ever. So when it comes to socializing, usually when I get a new animal, I like to leave it alone for at least two weeks. I want the animal to watch me clean its environment with very slow movements, okay? I'm going to clean the water very slowly. I'm going to clean the poop, okay, very slowly if the animal decided to poop somewhere else, because usually monitors like to poop in the water, but sometimes they like to splash poop somewhere else, so you have to make sure I have to make sure that I keep the enclosure clean and do everything very slowly. Uh, and the next step is going to feed the animals with the tongues like this and offer the food very, very slowly. I want the animal to think that the hand is a friend and I want the animal to think that I am uh, a butler. I am the metro d i am alfred i am the one taking care of them and helping them so when the animal is eating from the tongues i like to put a hand down and offer the food with the other hand with the tongues and eventually the animal is going to be comfortable and jump on the hand to eat whatever i'm feeding from the tongues so to prove the animal that the hand is not food and to prove the animal that the hand is a friend. Next step, I like to do what I call the uh, walk with me technique or the walking technique, okay? So once the animal is used to the hands, okay, it sees the hands arriving very slowly, it's like, oh, okay, the hand is a friend. Grab the animal, gently and I like to walk the animal on my hand. My hand. My hands. Yeah, both. I've got two hands, so may as well use both hands. So I walk the animal very slowly like this, okay? And usually after this, it's pretty self-explanatory. Whenever you feed the animal, it's going to eat. Whenever you're not feeding the animal, the animal is going to say, oh, that's the hand is a friend. It's not food, but meh. Okay, do your thing. Clean the poop and clean the water. That's great. 
and I want the animal to feel relaxed. Okay, in order to do so, the first step I do, you can do whatever you want. This is what I do. I like to keep the babies in smaller enclosures, then the juveniles in bigger enclosures, and then the adults in adult enclosures. So, a newly acquired animal, usually I'll keep it like this in a very simplistic enclosure. It doesn't look extraordinary, but I do this for a reason. I want the animal to be able to bask, to find the water, to find the food, to roam around, but I want this animal to make sure that is, it is watching me whenever I walk around, or do a video, or play music, or do something. Whenever I do something, the animal is watching me, and it's not just hiding uh, behind somewhere, you know, and just, okay? So that's the, uh, the, uh, what I call the ice breaker, okay? Uh, that is just a generic, you know, a general technique of, you know, first approach, uh, then prove the animal that the hand is a friend, then I want to prove the animal that I am the Alfred Butler helper maitre d' kind of person. Uh, then later on I'm going to try to do some very gentle handling. I do not want to force the animals. Uh, and that works for about 87 point 92% of the animals uh, that I work with every day. One thing to keep in mind is that animals are individuals. You have gentle dogs and you have unstable dogs, okay? Some of these unstable dogs are really nice with their owners and whenever they see someone else they freak out. It's not my case. My dogs love everything and everyone. They're very nice and it's wonderful, okay? Um, for example, with cats, um, one of my cats is extremely gentle and adorable. Uh, and the other one is gentle, adorable, wants to be scratched. And when she's done, she's going to scratch you and then go away. So, <laughs> animals have personalities, okay? Whether it's a turtle, a tortoise, a skink whether it's a Nile monitor, or whether it's a savanna monitor, whether it's a water monitor, or a Euromastix, or a Skebabdebab, animals have their own personalities. Humans are the worst, but animals are pretty easy, you know. They're either nice or not nice. When they're nice, the socializing process is going to be easy or e easier, and if the animal is not nice, you're going to have to respect that and leave it alone. Some animals do not want to be touched, you know. Some humans do not want to be touched, <laughs> you know. Some people are just, hey, ha, I want to hug you, and people are like just, Ooh. you know. So, <laughs> there you go. That was uh, probably one of the worst uh, YouTube videos about water monitors out there. But uh, there you go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're still watching this video, I really want to thank you and bravo. You made it. <laughs> so, water monitors from Australia, from Africa, from Indonesia, from Asia are usually a medium or large monitors that live in or near the water. If you have any questions, any recommendations, feel free to comment, feel free to give me a call, send a fax, uh, send an email, you know the drill, you just try to contact, you know. I think that engaging contact is uh, very healthy, okay? Um, herpetoculture is what most people consider a uh, young activity, but herpetoculture, the culture of reptiles, 
has been around for about 3,000 years. Uh, it's just that today in the 2000, uh, we have the internet, we have the tools, we have the technology to keep these animals uh, very, e it's very, it's fairly easy to keep these animals uh, in terrariums now because 80 years ago uh, a heating system was uh, quite complicated. The UVB uh, lights uh, weren't really invented, so people had to uh, find ways to provide UVB to their animals, a proper uh, heat. Uh, there was no uh, temp guns or no misters, so people tried, okay? Some people managed and some people didn't, but today, in 2019 already, we have the chance and the ability to keep these animals uh, fairly easily. So every keeper, every breeder has his own technique to keep, raise, and breed these reptiles or amphibians or birds. Just to conclude this extremely long uh, and confusing and interacting uh, video about water monitors, I just want to say that if you have any recommendations or any modern and viable information about water monitors in general, feel free to share. Okay, so I really want to thank you for watching this very long video about water monitors. Uh, just a reminder that uh, water monitors require high humidity. Uh, monitors are animals, and like every animal, they have their own personality. Some of them can be nice, some of them can be nasty, some of them are in between. So. It is your job to try to figure out and read the personality of the animal that you just acquired or just hatched or whatever. Another thing to keep in mind, I do things a little bit differently than you. You do things a little bit differently than this person and this person is doing things a little bit differently than this person. Uh, herpetoculture is about 3,000 years old, probably older than that, but only today in uh, 2019, already, already in 2019, wow. Today, we have the equipment and the technology to keep these animals at home and herpetoculture is a more popular uh, area, a lot more popular than it was 30 or 40 years ago. So it's my job and it's your job to share information. Uh, it's my job to share tips and share the horrible descriptions that I just give you about <laughs> water monitors. <laughs> So, once again, uh, thank you for watching. Like the video, share the video, comment down below, give me a call, send a fax, send an email, you know the drill. Uh, you just watched a very long episode about water monitors. And remember, I'll see you later for another episode of 221B Reptiles.